it's an honor. Um, I appreciate you even coming on the platform. Uh, I want to welcome you to the show. Uh, I guess my first question is for the viewers who may not recognize you, uh, let them know who you are and definitely where you're from. Okay, um, my name is Mia Donovan and I'm a documentary filmmaker from Montreal. And my most recent film is Death is Death, which talks about the story of the Lincoln Detox program in the South Bronx. That was an acupuncture program developed by Dr. Matula Shakur to treat uh, withdrawal symptoms associated with drug use. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, it's definitely a um, powerful film. Um, I got to check it out. Now I got to ask you, is, is this your first project or do you have other projects? Uh, no, well, this is, Dope is Death is my third film. So wow, it's my most okay. recent document. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Now for the viewers, now, uh, how did you um, get into this actual project? What inspired you to take on, you know? Well, for Dope is Death, it started, um, the first, I first learned about Dr. Shakur in 20, around 2012 or 2013 from my acupuncturist. His name's Dr. Mario Wexu. And he had a poster on the wall in his home that said, we can see it in the film. It's a poster from the Lincoln Detox uh, in the South Bronx. So I was asking him about this poster that said, we will fight heroin by and methadone by any means necessary. And it said, um, educate the people. And it said, Dr. Matulu Shakur, the South Bronx. And I, it was just this incredible, like, odd poster that I wasn't expecting to see in my acupuncture's, at my acupuncture's home in Montreal, Quebec. So he was telling me how in the 70s, he got a call from Dr. Shakur and others at the South Bronx because at that time, Montreal was had the only acupuncture school in North America. And because it was in French, Mario, who was the son of the director who spoke English, uh, just they decided, they were so impressed by what they were doing that they gave them scholarships to come to Montreal and Mario taught them in English, which in them meaning Dr. Matulu Shakur, Richard Delaney, Walter Bosque and Richard Murphy. So there was four uh, activists from the South Bronx that came up. And so it was basically through that and hearing about that story. And then I started to write Dr. Shakur in prison, like in, I guess, 2012, and then start visiting him in 2013. Wow, wow, that's inspiring. Uh, Thank you for sharing that. Um, So I guess my, my next question is for the viewers, like what exactly is acupuncture? Um, well, I mean, acupuncture is, there's different principles. Like it's like using the, there's meridians uh, that are associated with healing. I'm not really the best position to describe what acupuncture is because it's very complex. And um, I know that for myself, it works. And I've seen the impact of the five point or acupuncture protocol having a very positive impact on people. And the science is, I can't really speak to the science, but I do know that it's um, a holistic healing. So there's no chemicals, no, which is what made it very appealing to Dr. Shakur in the Black Panthers and the Young Lords and the activists who were very skeptical of methadone maintenance and heroin at that time in the, in the US because they viewed heroin and methadone as uh, weapons of a chemical warfare to pacify resistance, political resistance. So for them to find a non-chemical treatment was very important. And acupuncture is really effective and it's inexpensive and easy to, enough to learn. So they were able to develop this, you know, to kind of zero in on the potential of ac- acupuncture and then actually put it into practice in an effective way. Wow, okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, I never actually uh, tried acupuncture, but I I was looking it up online and it's used for so many things, for stress, anxiety, mental health, uh, pain relief, drug addiction. So it's something that, that definitely has sparked my interest and it appears to be effective, you know. That's definitely yeah. amazing. 
You should definitely try it, I think. Yeah, I've been thinking about it because I actually I started like a mental health group for black men and black boys because you know, a lot of times in the black community, the mental health aspect is overlooked, especially with the with the males. So, you know, we try to provide different solutions or different coping mechanisms and ways to deal with stress, anger management, you know, discrimination and different things that people go through past trauma. So, yeah, I definitely want to uh, look more into it. Now, I can ask you a little bit about this um, for the viewers who may not be uh, familiar. Like what what is methadone and, and why was methadone? used and, and what problems did it cause? Methadone maintenance or methadone is a synthetic opioid that was developed, that was starting to be used in, I think in the 60s in the United States to treat withdrawal symptoms. And then it became, um, the government started to support methadone maintenance clinics in particularly New York City as a kind of, I guess, as an anecdote or to like the street crime. So it became like, there was this idea that heroin, which, sorry, it's a bit complicated and I hope I can explain it properly, but it was, it's a drug that the problem became in how the government was utilizing methadone as a way to control and to, in a punitive way. So if people were caught, say, in New York City um, for a petty crime, and it was discovered that they were perhaps using heroin, they would be manda mandated to go on a methadone maintenance program by the government, which meant you had to go every single day, you had to get uh, your methadone every day, and that if you didn't comply with the rules, it's you could be kicked out of your public housing or different services would not be like you wouldn't be able to access certain services. So it was really seen as like a form of like liquid handcuffs, a way to control people and kind of this like band-aid solution to what the war on drugs viewed as like, you know, heroin being, um, you know, like the reason for crime. So it's like, has a very complicated history and it's very clear if you look at it even today like how it was used not so much as a public health solution but as a way to control people and that's what made the activists so suspicious of it the way that it was being used at, to and mandate it's still being used today in the same way you could you know like people are still on methadone for i know people who've been on it for 25 years now you know and um of course, kind of going back to what you were talking about earlier, if you go on methadone every day, you're not really getting to the deep roots of, if you were, if you did have a drug issue and you were dependent on a substance by taking methadone, you're not actually getting to the root of the problem and dealing with the trauma or the healing. So there's that side. And then the other side, it's like the government is just like, okay, let's just pump all these, let's just put all these methadone clinics and get people to, on methadone and coming into a clinic every day. And then we can like street crime will go down. Like it was kind of like that in terms of like the war on drugs. Like, so there's so much wrong with it. There's so many problems with it. It's a very easy solution. So the Lincoln detox, they wanted to, in reaction to this, they wanted to provide acupuncture, but also political education classes and support for the community. So it was like a holistic approach. It wasn't just acupuncture. It was, they understood acupuncture can help with the withdrawal symptoms, but that education and awareness and other, like to deal with like the root causes, you know, like the root causes of, of that result from racism and poverty and living in the South Bronx at that time, which, you know, had very bad, um, the city was, it was the seventies in New York. So the city was, almost bankrupt. So a lot of the services were cut in the poor neighborhoods. So, you know, there's like, they, they really, these were young activists in their early twenties who saw this clearly, you know, like, so it's, that's what's so inspiring about it for me. And yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. A lot of the Panthers and the, and the, uh, the activists were young. It was teenagers, some of them, you know, they was kids. So that's, that's very inspiring.